welcome you into the presence of God this morning. The Lord has been so gracious and we are so grateful. Um, thank you, Australia, for a very warm, warm welcome and uh, the hospitality that you have uh, rendered to us as uh, your guest speakers. Um, we want to get into the word of God. This is a wonderful day that the Lord has made. I want to thank the apostles of Jesus Christ, Professor Ezekiel Guti and uh, Mama Guti, for having assigned us to come and share with you during this wonderful conference. God has really been ministering to us in a special way, and I believe that greater things are going to happen even after this conference. The Lord has been touching lives. The Lord has been transforming lives. After we left here last night, by the grace of God, I, I had an experience of a, a, a special anointing that continued through with me in the night. And... Uh, I, I believe that God was also working in you as he was working in me. This is something that I have always desired to see happening when we meet as children of God. And um, the greatest joy that I find in the body of Christ is, is the joy that ushers us into the presence of God where we receive new experience, new revelation uh, uh, in the things of God. Do you know that if you uh, cease to receive insight or revelation in the things of God, you cease to grow? And so I want to thank God for this special favor to be allowed to come and share. Today we are reading the word of God from the book of Exodus. Um, and uh, we are going to pick up from Exodus chapter 7, verse 16. I want to be talking to you today about uh, a message that I have entitled, um, It's Time to Save the Lord. Just a few uh, months uh, when I received this message from the Lord, and I, 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 I shared just a little bit. It was just part of the introduction to the pastors. And uh, Dr. Stanley Masaka was uh, among the audience that were there. And then he came to me and he said, where did you get this uh, 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 message? And as you were sharing with, with us, I just sensed that uh, it's, a, it's a message for the time. And he said... Are you going to allow me to be sharing again from the same scriptures, sharing with the church, the body of Christ? I say, why not? Why not? And uh, one of the reasons why we are coming to be reading this passage of scripture today, it is because we have to carry this assignment with us to go to the church and go and announce to the church that it is time to serve the Lord. Some of us, we've been serving ancestral spirits. Others have been serving witchcraft. Others have been serving men. Others have been doing funny sorts of things. But it is time to serve the Lord your God. And I'll read the book of Exodus. You know, God amazes me so much. The story that we will be reflecting on today is the story about the children of Israel and the Lord God Almighty when he delivered them out of the land of Egypt. There are a number of things that we are going to look at today as we read the word of God as I share with you. And I believe that you and I are destined for a special service that we are going to render to the Lord. God has something in store for you and I today. And uh, at the end of this service, I want to promise you that uh, 
God wants each one of us to leave this place with the Spirit to serve the Lord. I will read the Word of God, chapter 7, verse 16. And say to him, the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has sent me to you, saying, let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness. And behold, therefore you have not listened. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for bringing life and illumination through your spirit. We thank you for the revelation of the word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. The story begins in chapter 3. The children of Israel started crying to God for deliverance from the hand of Pharaoh. Israel was taken into captivity into the land of Egypt. But whilst in the land of Egypt, Israel suffered a lot until God had mercy on his people Israel. And the Bible tells us how God had to come down and strike the bush with fire and it started burning. Time does not permit us to go right into the entire background of the whole story. But what we understand is that this is how Moses was called by God when he saw the bush burning and uh, God started to speak to his life, truly speaking, God wanted to deliver Israel because he had heard the cry of the children of Israel. And he states, as we read in the word of God, God says, I have come down to deliver you. I have come down to set you free. It is true that God's perfect will for his people for this generation and the generations to come, God wants to set us free. He wants you and I to be free moral beings wherever we are. God does not want us to be kept in ransom by any form of force from any quarters, from any nation, from any people. God wants his people to be free. One of the things that this generation has suffered so much, it is to suffer under different kinds of influences that some people, even up to today, they are not free. They are not free. God's desire for you and I is that God wants us to be free. Wherever we are, God wants us to be free. That's why the Bible says, when the Son of Man sets you free. Not when the church sets you free. When the Son of Man sets you free. Not when your friend sets you free. Not when your brother sets you free. Not when your husband sets you free. Not when your wife sets you free. But when God when the Lord Jesus Christ, when the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, sets you free, you shall be free indeed. 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 God wants his people to be free. And so he spoke to Moses and he said, I want to send you to Pharaoh. I want you to go and speak to Pharaoh these words. And God said, go and tell Pharaoh that he must let my people go. God likes a going people. God does not like people who just stand still or sleep continuously. God likes a people who are going. Going for the things of the kingdom. Let my people go. So that they may save me. God's intention. 
God's perfect will for you and I is that he wants us to, to be going. Going where? Going for service. God wants us to be getting there for service. He wants us to go freely. I like what the word of God says on this passage of scripture. The word saved there is the same word that we uh, translate as to minister. In Mark chapter 10, verse 45, the Bible says, For the Son of Man did not come to be ministered unto, but he came to serve and gave his life as a ransom for many, that through his life we may be saved. He came to minister, not to be ministered unto. He came to serve, not to be served. He came to minister, not to be ministered unto. The joy of becoming a leader in Forward in Faith is that Forward in Faith is a ministry that releases you to serve. Forward in faith does not tie strings on you. Forward in faith releases you to serve. I have other churches that I know. They don't allow you to preach, to stand here. You can be an elder, you can be a deacon, but you don't come here to minister. Forward in faith is a free ministry of God. It allows you to minister, to serve. God said, tell Pharaoh, to let my people go so that they may serve me. God is interested in serving. That's why he sent his son Jesus Christ to come and die for us on the cross. Because he himself is interested in serving. What kind of a God? God does not sit up there in heaven and just expect us to be doing things. He himself did things for us. He worked for us. He served before time immemorial. And so we believe that it is now our turn. As he was speaking to Israel, the children of Israel were crying. Oh, we are suffering under Pharaoh. Oh, we wish God would deliver us. And God heard their cry. I want you to know today, you may be in your house, you've been crying for too long. You may be at your workplace and you've been crying for too long. You may be in your business and you've been crying for too long. And I'm saying to say this to you, God has heard your cry. That's why he has sent me to you today to speak to your life. God has heard your cry. That's why he has called upon the seven and apostle of God to assign us to come and speak to you because God has heard your cry. God has heard your cry. You have been crying enough. And your cry has come before the throne of grace. God is saying into your life, it's time for you to serve the Lord. You know you have not been serving God properly. You know something has been holding you back. You know somebody has been hindering you from serving the Lord. Now, I want you to understand that there is the spirit which operated in Pharaoh. That spirit was a serious spirit. Let me get back a little bit. Let me get back a little bit. In the word of God, we read that when God asked Moses and Aaron to go and speak to Pharaoh, they went there not only once. But can I tell you something? The creator of the universe Send his messengers with one simple word. Pharaoh, the Lord is saying, let my 
people go. Simple. Pharaoh was not supposed to argue. He was simply supposed to say, okay, I'm releasing them. They must now go and serve God. But it was never like that. It was never like that. When you continue to read the word of God, you find out that God, after speaking to Pharaoh through Moses, Moses will leave Pharaoh thinking that now he is going to release the children of Israel to go and serve the Lord. And then in return, the scripture says God would harden the heart of Pharaoh. And then he would stop the children of Israel from going. Each time the children of Israel will prepare to leave. They will pick their bags. They are ready to go. But the Bible says Pharaoh would not let them go. The moment the children of Israel would try to walk out and Pharaoh would begin to shout out, where are you going? Come back. You are going nowhere. Read your word. Read the word of God. Read your Bible. Find out how many times he refused the children of Israel, to go. That same spirit did not only control Israel when she was there in Egypt. That same spirit is controlling people in the churches. That same spirit is controlling the body of Christ to fail to serve the Lord. That same spirit. It's the same spirit. You say, yeah, you can now go. Yes, yes, organize yourself and go and serve the Lord. You are now ready to go. I will release you. You can go. And the moment the little ones begin to run around in celebration that we are now getting free. We are now about to be free. We have been released now to go to the land of promise. The moment they try to run around in celebration that we are now ready to go, he will then come back and say, where are you going? You, know, you are going nowhere. Stop. Stay. 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 You try to pray. You try to pray. You find yourself, you're not praying. You say, oh no, I'm tired. I can't pray, I'm tired. I need to rest. For the sake of my health, I need to rest. And then you rest. And then the next time you plan again to pray, and, and you feel there's a slight pain here on the back. And then uh, you say, but this pain, I think I need rest. And then you, you, you stop praying. It's that same spirit. It is that same spirit that we are fighting against. God said, let my people go so that they may serve me. When you go through the word of God, I've already tried to explain something here. To serve, you don't serve unless you are free to do so. Whenever we talk of serving, we are talking about an individual who is totally free from any form of entanglement and their heart is so clean, their mind is ready to serve. And then they go into service. Such kind of a person will be able to serve the Lord. We are not talking about somebody who is being coerced to do something for God. No, 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 no. We are not talking of force here. When you talk of saving, we're not talking of force. It's not about slavery. Israel was suffering in Egypt under Pharaoh as slaves. They were suffering. They were not saving. They were slaves in Egypt. And God is not calling his people to become second slaves in his kingdom. God is calling his people for service. God is not interested in slaves. 
No, 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 no. He's not interested in slaves. You've been in bondage for too long. And as I'm speaking to you right now, you are very much aware in your life things are not moving. Every time you try to do something, something gets hold of you and you find you are always giving up. What's that? That's the same spirit that was operating in Pharaoh. But thank God for Christ Jesus our Lord. I want you to know Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, came so that you and I may be free from any form of entanglement. God is calling us for service. Wherever you are, you need to know that God is calling you for service. It is time to serve the Lord. 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 So God is not interested in people being forced to do certain things. No, God does not get take pleasure in that. God is interested when we walk into his kingdom and we become free moral beings expressing ourselves, celebrating the joy of our salvation, and then we begin to do things in the house of God, God gets excited. He gets excited to see you doing things in the house of the, of the Lord with a free heart, free conscience, free mind. Everything that you do, you must do it with total freedom. In Egypt, it was not like that to Israel. That's why God had to send Moses to go and speak this message to Pharaoh. Now, as you go through the word of God, you are also reminded on several occasions, God had to continue repeating this again and again. In chapter 8, verse 1, you hear God repeating the same phrases. And then he says, let my people go. God was not disassociating or disengaging himself from Israel because they turned up to be slaves of Pharaoh. God was still connecting himself to the children of Israel. He was still reaching, though he was God, but he was still reaching his people. Even though they were under slavery, under Pharaoh's hand, God was still reaching them. That's why when you read in the book of Exodus, the Bible says God came down. He did not remain up there. We know theologians tell us that God is omnipresent. He is everywhere. Now, if he is everywhere, there was no need for him to come down. But according to the Hebrew text, when you read in the Hebrew language, it reminds you, it gives you, the, the words there gives you an impression of a God who is making a genuine movement, cowing down to his subjects in favor, moving in favor of his subjects. I want you to know, right now at this very hour, God is moving. He is moving. He is moving because of you. He is moving because of you. He is moving because of you. There is commotion. God is moving. The Bible says he came down. When God is ready to serve his people, he does not sit still. Yes, theology tells us he is omnipresent. He's everywhere. But can I remind you something? When we say God in theology, when we say God is everywhere, it does not mean to say he is working wonders everywhere. No, it does not mean that. He is everywhere in the sense that if you go into the space and you are in a desperation, you need God, something is going on and you call upon him, he will come. If you go right deep under the sea and something happens to you there and you call 
upon him, he will reveal himself from the deep of the ocean. You called out to me, and I heard you calling. Jonah was picked. By one of the biggest fish. Some people tell us a lot of things and they tell us it was this fish by the name, this kind of fish, this one. And the Bible says that he was swallowed by a fish. It's a species that lives in water. And it swallowed Jonah. When it swallowed Jonah, and he cried out from the belly of that fish. God who is omnipresent. God who is everywhere. God who is ready to come down at your point of need. He came down right there in the womb of the fish. <laughs> the fish was used to swallow different kinds of objects. But when it swallowed someone who is created in the image of God, when God came down, the fish says that this thing that is in my tummy now must come out. If I try to keep it in here, I will die. The Bible says you cannot contain God. You cannot put him in a box. God is the almighty. He is the great art. He is the great, 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 great God, the creator of the universe. The Hebrews calls them the almighty God, which speaks about an all-forceful God. He's a God of power. And the fish had to run around. I can see someone who was swallowed last month. <laughs> oh, yes, you were, you were swallowed by an object. And that object is trying to keep you. But something is happening. God has already come down. He has already come down. I'm telling you something tomorrow, this morning. He has already come down. God is, has already come down. And the Bible says, Jonah was pitted, not at the center of the ocean. Let me come closer. God is not going to spit you right at the center of the ocean. He is not going to take you from trouble into deep troubles. That's not how God works. When God picks you from trouble, he will release you into freedom. He does not put you into deep problems. God will not release you from a serious problem into a most, most serious problem. God does not work like that. A certain woman came into my office from another church, and she said, I heard you are praying for people here. And I said, oh, yes, we do minister to people. She said, I went to one of these, you know, one of these funny prophets, and uh, she said to me, he said, you are suffering a lot. I can see you are suffering a lot. But now, I want you to go and sleep. In your sleep, you are going to have a dream. And in that dream, that's where uh, your answer is. And then she said, I don't understand. Something happened, yes, in the dream. But I did not get the solution to my problems. The problems became worse. That following morning, I went to work, and I was fired from work. And now, something came into my mind and my heart, and I said, I'm sick and tired of this kind of churches. I want to go and look for this man called Ezekiel Guti. I want him to pray for me because I've been suffering for too long. I want you to know 
God did not stop with Moses and Aaron. God is still sending his messengers across the globe to come and speak and declare to today's Pharaoh, let my people go. This is the reason why it is his nature when he sent his servant to speak to us, we know things happen because there's a reason. Israel had suffered. Mm. Yeah, Israel had suffered. That's why as you read the book of Exodus, you'll hear again in chapter 8, verse 20, God comes back again and he says to Pharaoh, let my people go so that they may serve me. Now, we all understand in terms of prepositions, in law, when we use the term may, it is very subjective. I want you to listen to this. It clearly declares that if it is from God, it is not referring to the literally uh, understanding that we have that it may happen or it may not happen. It speaks about the enablement of God that come what may, and the reason they use that term from the translation, it is because with God there is time, there is scope, there is space. And that time is very difficult for us as human beings to define it. We cannot define God's timing. Tell your neighbor, you cannot define God's timing. But when that time comes, you will know. Oh, yes, you will know. I said to somebody, if I pray for you today and you don't receive your healing, I pray again and you don't receive your healing. The third time and you don't receive your healing, I refer you to somebody. I don't keep you in prison. I refer you to somebody. I know how God works. There was this young pastor who had suffered seriously. And he traveled from his country coming to Zimbabwe. He came into my office and he said, Baba, I have suffered with this problem. I have tried. I've been to doctors. I've been prayed for and prayed for and prayed for. But when I was praying, I saw you in a vision praying for me. So I said to myself, God is speaking to me so that I travel to Zimbabwe and I go and talk to this person to pray for me. And you know, that day, I prayed with him. In a week's time, he called me. He went back to Zambia. He called me and he said, Baba, that problem is over. I'm so excited. I was wondering how I was going to save the Lord. I was failing to serve the Lord because of this problem. There are some people in here today who are failing to serve the Lord. And there are so many, many people who are failing to serve the Lord because there's a problem in your life. Something is controlling you. You are not free. Some of us here, yeah, we are celebrating. Oh yes, we are celebrating because we are free. But there are some people who cannot move even an inch. Not because they don't want to move, but because something is controlling them. Or oh, they are prisoners. I'm speaking to you today. I have come as your humble messenger today to speak to you. That your God is still crying out loud saying, let my people go. Whether you are from the north or from the south, 
whether you are from the moon or from the ocean, God is crying out, let my people go so that they may save me. Everybody say service. Shout again and say service. I want you to speak like you've had your breakfast. Say service. God says in chapter 10 of the book of Exodus on verse 3, he says again to Moses, tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Uh, and what I'm beginning to see now, I'm beginning to see someone who is not crippled, but the way they are doing things, they are like they are crippled. They are trying to rise up to walk. And every time they try to rise up to walk, their legs just spin them down and they fall. Oh, yes, I can see somebody right now. You're trying to walk, but you are not going anyway. Since you started walking, since you started worshiping, since you started fellowshipping, all you need, you continue to do, you try to rise up and walk, and then you just, you just go like this. Every time you can't go anyway, you're just going like this. Up to this very same day, I see that in my spirit. God is saying, as he's speaking to that spirit that controls you, that has been controlling you all these years. That's why you have a tendency of coming into church and you go. You come when you like and you go. And you come when you like and you go. Sometimes people think you, you are out of Australia. And yet you are in Australia. Others think that you have gone far away to New Zealand. And yet you never crossed the border to the immigration in New Zealand. You are still in Australia. But you don't turn up for service. It's a spirit. I'm saying to you, it's a spirit. It's a spirit. You give a lot of excuses. Ah, uh, honey. Uh, today I don't feel like it's a spirit I'm coming over to you I'm telling you in the name of the Lord I'm telling you in the name of the Lord I'm telling you in the name of the Lord it is a spirit it's not God it's not you I repeat it's not God I repeat it's not you it's not you it's not you but it's a spirit That's why you are so weak. It's a spirit. I'm speaking to you. It is a spirit. You say in your heart, have I become a slave to God? God is not calling you to become a slave. God is calling you to become a servant. Let my people go so that they may save me. <laughs> you cannot play with God, my brother, my sister. God wants you now to tune in. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Sheka Mahawa. In the book of Exodus, chapter 14, when God speaks to you in a manner, he is speaking to you right now. You and I, we need to understand that God loves us. That's why he had to come down. Yes, if I look at your stature, you are nothing, man. You are nothing. You are, you, you are just formless. You are nothing. But when God looks at you, he says, there is my child. 
there is my daughter. <laughs> I'm going for my son. I'm going for my daughter. God does not look at you and he sees something like an ant. He sees his image. That's why in the book of Psalms he says, Had I not said you are little gods. Time has come for us to save God. Time has come for us to be held like little gods. Say to somebody sitting next to you, it's all about you. It's all about you. Chapter 14 of the book of Exodus, God says, as we read the word of God, there's something that I want you to take note of. God continued to speak, and he continued to speak his mind to Pharaoh. As he continued to speak, something then happened. And we come now to verse 12. The word of God says, Did we not tell you in Egypt, let us alone, let us save the Egyptians, for it would have been better for us to save the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. Right now, there are people in the church today who don't understand the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. And they don't even understand the language of the kingdom of God and the language in the kingdom of Satan. They borrow a term, a word that is used in the kingdom of God, and they bring it into the kingdom of Satan thinking that it applies. Israel was, n was never a servant in Israel. Israel was a slave. Everybody say Israel was a slave. She was never a servant in, in Egypt. Never. Never. You cannot say I'm a servant of God. When every week you sleep with a woman and you say, I'm a servant of God. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> There's nothing like that in the kingdom of God. You find these things in the kingdom of Satan. We need to understand the language that applies in the kingdom. And the characteristics that are defined by the kingdom of God. Than the kingdom of Satan. Here, the people who were set free from the land of Egypt by God, when the, all the firstborns were slaughtered that night by the angel of death, and Israel was released by Pharaoh. He said, ah, now I've had enough. I can't stand it. The firstborn from the cats, the firstborn from the dog, the firstborn from the chicken, the firstborn from the rats, the firstborn from the lice, the firstborn from the cattle, the first born from the sheep. The first born. Oh. Every species that you know, its first born died that night for Israel to be set free. That's how powerful your God is. Tell your neighbor, that's how powerful your God is. Do you know these tiny flies, very tiny, but when they attack you, you spend minutes scratching and scratching. Do you know them? Very, very tiny. Their first born also died that night. The first born from the lion, the first born from the, from the elephants, they all died. And Pharaoh said, enough is enough. I can't afford to see this happening again in my country. Israel, go. Now, Israel had just gone out for a short while out of the land of Egypt. And now we come to verse 14. They are now speaking back to the messenger, right? Like what some of you are doing right now. You are speaking back to me. And you are saying, what has this to do with you? Why, why do you worry? This is none of your business. This is my life. 
My question to you is, which life are you talking about? Which life do you possess? Because right now, as I'm speaking here, you can collapse there. Life is not in your hands. It is in the hand of God. Read your Bible. Read the Word of God. Read the Word of God. So you have nothing to be pompous of. There's virtually nothing to be proud of. Listen to what they said here. Let it was, did we, did we not tell us, tell you in Egypt, let us alone. You are saying this morning, hey, Dr. Rupapa, let, let me alone. Leave me alone. It's my life. Even if I have seven boyfriends, leave me alone. It's my life. My question is, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? Because this is a community that belongs to the kingdom of heaven. And those who aspire to be in this kingdom must function and operate according to the principles of this kingdom. It's not anyhow. It's a kingdom of sanctity. Freedom. Total separation. It is a kingdom of the cold ones. That's why we get this Greek word, the Greek word that, that defines the cold out ones as the ecclesia. It means the ones that were selected among many to represent God and God alone, not God and adulterers. Do you get me well? I'm speaking to you. Do you get me well? You are saying, let me alone, it's my life. And you are destroying that life with marijuana. And you are saying, but it's my life. The smoke is not spoiling your, 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 your body, it's spoiling me. It's, it's nothing to do with you. These are my lungs. Where did you get the lungs from? Was there any of exchange of money? Did you buy those lungs? I want to believe according to my Bible, those lungs came from God. I want to believe according to my Bible, that heart came from God. I want to believe whatever member consists and is part of your body, it came from God. That's why if you have anything extra, a parasite, we speak to that parasite to leave in the name of Jesus. Let us alone. We tell you it's time to offer. It's time to give to the Lord. You say, let us alone. Tell your neighbor. He's speaking to you now. Can you find yourself on the map? Are you in Egypt or you, 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 you are in Canaan? It pains to live with people in Canaan when they are in Egypt. It pains, I repeat that, it pains. It drags the body of Christ. It causes a lot of dysfunction in the body of Christ. If you had the news for God to tell God to leave you in Egypt, so why were you crying in the first place? Because what came to God first was not your message to be allowed to remain in Egypt. What came first to God was your cry. So why have you changed the language? Why have you changed the statement? Why have you changed the position? Why have you moved backwards? 
I want to speak to somebody. Be yourself. You. Be yourself. Be yourself. God, in his mercy, was just listening. And they were speaking. We continued talking. Tell your neighbor, these people, they like too much talking. They talk. And they said, let us save the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to save the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. I don't know which God you are serving, but the God of my father, the God of Professor Ezekiel Good, is a good God. He is a good God. He is a good God. He does not call people so that he may destroy them. No. He calls people for a better future. He calls people for a pleasant end. He calls people that they may celebrate the goodness of God for all the days of their life. That is why the psalmist says, I was glad when they say to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. It's time to celebrate. It's time to serve the Lord. It's time to minister to God. It's time to do something for the Lord. Uh, it's good, man. I don't think I'll have another boyfriend like John and Samson. Do you think John and Samson surpasses God? The same spirit that was controlling Pharaoh is the same spirit that is now controlling the Israelites, even though they have walked out of Egypt. My question, where are we? Walking out of Egypt does not confirm that you are totally free. Carrying a Bible does not confirm even preaching like I'm doing does not confirm. <laughs> a man flew all the way from another country coming to our country, Zimbabwe, as a preacher. Preached, finished the preaching. When he finished the preaching, he grabbed one of the little girls, the hosting from the hosting team, took her to a hotel. And they had sex in that hotel. The following day, he picked one another one. Walking, carrying the Bible, preaching, preaching, does not confirm whether you are totally out of Egypt. Until you yourself totally separate yourself from those things. And it is from that moment that you will see your heart panting, desiring, having the hunger and passion to want to serve God. You don't have the passion. You don't have the hunger to save God. You don't feel like you want to do something. One sign that I want to assure you today is, if you are really for God and you love God, you always feel like, I want to do something for the Lord. I want to do something for the Lord. Even if you don't know what exactly you're supposed to do, you even approach the pastor and say, Pastor, is there anything that I can do in the house of God? I'm reminded of this woman. She came when we were at another church trying to help that church in, in Zimbabwe. And she came and said, I'm a new member. But I don't know whether it's, it's right, it's correct, or whether it's permissible. 
I said, what is it, mama? She said, I just feel like I must do something for the Lord. What is it that I can do? I don't know. And I said to her, what are you really good at? What do you think you can do? She said, would you love me to do interior decor in the church? I'm specialized in that area. And I said, with pleasure. I'll talk to my elders. And I said to my elders, there's this lady, please allow her to go ahead doing interior deco in the church. Put whatever she wants to put, but make sure she brings the right thing in the church. That's all that I said. But we allowed her to minister. We allowed her to serve. Because in her heart, she wanted to serve the Lord. Don't stop people who have the passion to do something for their God. Some churches are shrinking because people are not releasing those who want to serve the Lord to do so. Say to your neighbor, I pray for you so that the spirit that was in Pharaoh does not come near you. I want you to remain a saint, a servant, ready to serve. Why do you stop people from serving the Lord? Hmm? What, what kind of spirit is that? You know, generally, I'm a very quiet person. Me, I mean me. I'm a very quiet person. I don't like talking, talking too much. But when I come here, I talk. Oh, yes. <laughs> when I come here, on the podium, I talk. When I open this book, I talk. But when I'm there, I, I take joy. You know, I, don't, I feel good when I see people doing things in the church. And they are celebrating. They are happy. They are joyous. There are some youngsters who came here. And they were, they, 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 is it they call them? Young generation, they were just a few. I think there were six of them, if I'm not mistaken. And they were dancing. I did, like they, they don't have the bones in their legs. I was sitting there. I got so much excited. And I said, thank God. Behold, the creatures of God are celebrating his goodness. I like to see people doing things for the, for the Lord in the house of God. I don't like to see people behaving like they are at a serious funeral in the church. I want to see people celebrating the goodness of Jesus Christ in the house of God. Oh. What is your option today? Do you want to remain in Egypt? Or you want to get into the promised land. Now in their minds. Even though they were released from Egypt. But in their minds they were not released. How do we know this? They never spoke any word of hope. They said it was better for us to die in Egypt. To to. To stay in Egypt than to die in the wilderness. Because to them, they thought getting into the wilderness simply means death. You are cut off. It's not like that with God. <laughs> it's not like that with God. You can live in a desert with this kind of God. Someone is saying, but not in Queensland, not in Australia. <laughs> I'm saying with this God, it's possible. You can live anywhere in this world. And you can still, they said, it was better for us to remain in Egypt. In Egypt, where you have seven men coming on top of you every night. And you want to live that kind of lifestyle. Hmm. I don't like to be tough. Hmm. 
Let my people go so that they may save me. I want you to know, church, as I'm speaking to you today, God is calling us for service. As you are going back to your churches, go and tell your members, God is calling you for service. Some have not been serving God because you have not been giving them a direction. You have not been asking them to do something. You never directed them to do something or to serve. You need to go and find out what they can do best in the church. So that you don't remain with people who seem to be strangers in their own church. You are an elder, but you are still a stranger. You. You are still a stranger. When, when the Lord has given you the, the spirit to serve, you find every time you meet the pastor, you have something good to say to the pastor. Pastor, I went to see our believer who did not turn up for the service on Sunday. But they are fine. They only had a small problem and I helped them. And the pastor says, who are these? He said, oh, it's Mr. and Mrs. James. He said, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Where do they live, by the way? Then I will take you there, pastor, one of the days. When you are free, let me know. I will take you there. That's an elder who is serving the Lord. You, you, don't, like, you don't like deacons who behave like a robot in the church. You, you want deacons who behave in style. When you see the deacon ri running eastwards, you know something good is going to happen. If you see the deacon running northward, you know something good is going to happen. <laughs> women, where are you, women? Where are you? I don't, I don't hear you in this meeting. You know why I say women, where are you? Because the men of God told us that uh, God gave them, gave him these women to support the work of God. They've been talking about the lighthouse talents here. You know, one thing that I, I appreciate is the special insight that our father has. If he comes here and he says, you, I want you to be the secretary of the church. Even if you don't have the language, you find you have the language. What a gift. Our father allows us to serve. When you are a leader, you must be known that you allow people to serve the Lord. Don't be a deacon who is too tough. Allow people to serve the Lord. I'm speaking to you right now. Sometimes you just need to be simple, simple enough to allow people to do what God is calling them to do. When you are serving with women, you need to know that it's important to have a sweet spirit. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Speak with a sweet spirit when you are serving with women. Don't be too tough. The Bible says they are a weaker vessel, which means they can be broken at any given time by what you say, by what you do. And if you know how to address them, you get wonders out of them. Where are you women? Every 
every man in here needs to respect his wife. Every man in here needs to respect his wife. Women, where are you? Every man has to respect their, his wife. If there is a woman who does not recognize and respect her husband, that woman is in trouble. She is in serious trouble. She is in serious trouble. You have to respect your husband. When, when you speak to your husband, let him know that he is the only king in the house. Even, he, even if he is in the soccer field. When other women are screaming and you say, Daddy, when he's right in the pitch, he must hear that voice. He must hear that voice and his style must change. Respect your husband. Now in forward in faith, we allow children to be free, but we don't allow children to disobey their parents. We, we in forward in faith, we don't allow that. In forward in faith, we don't allow, we don't allow children who point a finger at their parents and say, you gems, I've had enough of you gems. In forward in faith, we don't tolerate that. In forward in faith, we cultivate a culture of freedom. We want you to be free, but we want you to be respectful. <laughs> Do it. But after that, you must know how to respect. So don't say, hi, ah, we've been uh, to the conference, and... Uh, all they were doing was just screaming, screaming. Oh, they were special speakers. And then you end up there. Tell them what I'm telling you right now. When you go back, go and tell them. Speak to yourself and go and tell them that it is time to serve the Lord. Oh, I was so much impressed when I saw, because not many women... I like to play instruments, not men, especially among this group, not men. I was so excited to see the other lady, the, uh, the lady who plays the keyboard there. Where are you? Are you in here today or you are uh, going to work? Come and sit there and I want you to, to, to play a few, a few keys. It's time to serve the Lord in Australia. It is time to serve the Lord wherever you are. It is time to serve the Lord. God is calling his people to go and serve him. The Bible says on chapter 7 verse 16, Go, let my people go and serve me. Where? In the wilderness. Yes, play it. Play it like you can play it. Play it like you've been playing it all along. Play it with style. Because it is time to serve the Lord. Yes, it's time to serve the Lord. God said, I want you to go and serve me in the wilderness. A wilderness is a place of lake. It is not a place of abundance. A wilderness is not a place of pleasure. It is a place of challenge. So why is it that God calls these people to go and offer a service in the wilderness? 
instead of in a palace. God desires to see the energy, the talent that he placed in you being manifest in that kind of environment. And then he will declare, behold my people. God works with the trained people. He does not work with the untrained people. That's why you hear Paul says that I was in Arabia, <laughs> in the desert of Arabia. Doing what? Going under training. Moses was in the desert. Going under training. Ask the apostle and servant of God, Ezekiel Guti. Going up the mountains in Vumba. Going up the mountain in Bindura. All these places he was going through training. It was not an easy goal. He was going through training. All these 70 years that he has been preaching, he has been going through fire and many waters. But behold, the man still stands and he's still serving the Lord. He was totally liberated. You cannot hold him on a ransom. You can't. You can't keep him down. No, you can't. You can't control him. He's in a business of serving God. Some of you, that's why you didn't know why he did not come. He did not come because he's busy serving the Lord. Hmm. You know, in this ministry, we have funny people. They tell you, if Baba is not there, I'm not coming. Those are what we call funny people because they don't read their history book. Their history book tells them, Baba Guti says, I did not say I am God. I am just a servant. And the servant goes where his master wants him to be at a given time. Just as simple as that. Mm, 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 mm. Play it, play it, ladies. Play it. We want to celebrate. Praise and worship. Where are you? If you have come here and you are not born again, today is your day. It's a special day. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish and have everlasting life. If you are here today or you are at home, I want you to know that Jesus Christ died for you and I. You see me preaching like this? It's because I believe. I believe that I'm out of Egypt, totally out of Egypt. My wife knows this. If you are here somebody today and you sense in your spirit that the Lord has been speaking to you during the course of this session and, and, and you, you still sense that, sure, there are times when I regret to be in forward in faith. I wish I, 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 I can join that other church. I wish I was in this other church. The man who is speaking to you interacts with people from different churches and he knows what a church is and what a church is not. I know what a church is and I know what a church is not. There are some people who are just being gathered in groups of association and clubs in the name of Jesus with the people who call themselves preachers, but they don't preach for God. They preach for their belly. Ezekiel Guti was never called for money. He was called for souls. That's why before there was a car, he was preaching, going out on foot, preaching. Going out on his bicycle preaching. There was no car. There was no money. He was preaching. At our place where we come from, we have preachers who say, I'm an evangelist. Buy, I need a kit, a full kit of instruments because I want to go and evangelize the world. And we tell them, it's not about instruments. It's about you. Go! Where God is calling you to go. 
John was preaching and he was baptizing people. And he was calling people to repentance. And people flocked there to, be, to repent when John was preaching. But he had no bicycle, he had no car. He had no mansion. He was just tying a simple piece of leather around his waist. It's not about money, brothers and sisters. It, it is about Christ crucified. Are you here today, somebody, as I'm speaking to you right now, and you sense, yes, there's going to be a great deliverance, and I'll tell you how it's going to happen. I don't play. When I'm in God's business, I'm in God's business with him. Not alone, but with him. I'm in his business 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 with him. And I believe he's with me right now. And I believe he's in this place right now. Through his spirit, he's in this place right now. In the name of Jesus, he's in this place right now. I want you to know this. I've been in places where we pray mass prayers and great things begin to happen. I was in this meeting. This man had suffered. He could not pass urine for, for, for some weeks. And he came to church in our church. That day when he heard that there was a guest speaker, he came to our church and he was in pain. And you know what happened? I prayed a mass prayer in that meeting. That man started running like, a, like, a, like an, an aeroplane in the church. People thought that it was a demon running away in the church. Because the man sensed that urine was just about to come out. And he didn't want, want to spoil it, the house of God. So he ran to the bathroom and released himself. This God can perform wonders. Your womb may be totally dead. We are going to pray today. Because God wants you to go and serve him. God wants you to go and serve you. There's anything that is controlling you. You are not free. And you are sensing and you say, Doctor, I'm not free. Man of God, I'm not free. But I want to serve God. I don't want you to go out there and say to your husband or your wife, Yes, you heard what the preacher was saying. He was talking about you. You've been stopping me from doing this and that. Now you hate it for yourself. No, a wise person does not behave like that. When you are in the kingdom of God, you just say, honey, help me to pray so that I'll be free like the preacher was saying. Don't say he was talking about you. Say, help me to pray so that I may be free to serve the Lord. And God will see your heart. Today, I want everybody who is in here to make sure that the person who is sitting next to you is born again. If you are standing beside someone whom you are not so sure that they are born again, ask them to come front to come and receive Christ as their personal Savior. Someone is saying to me, Pastor, we are already deacons in this church. <laughs> you can be deacons and yet you are not born again. Play it, play it, ladies, play it. Play it, play it, play it, play it. Are you born again? If the person next to you is really born again, give them a high five. And tell them it is time to serve the Lord. Everyone who has heard this message must be able to answer this question. How are you going to serve the Lord? Answer in your heart. Don't speak it out. Answer in your heart. I want to pray a special prayer. If you sense you seem to have walked some few meters into Canaan, but Egypt is controlling you. I want to pray with you right now. 
ask you to raise up your hands to God. That same anointing is going to touch you where you are. So that you will be released. Some of you have already been released by the knowledge of the word of God that you have received. And others, because it is spiritual, we are now declaring upon your life to be free. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit to go. To go in the name of Jesus. Leave him. Leave him. Leave him in the name of Jesus. Leave her right now in the name of Jesus. Leave her right now in the name of Jesus. I release you in the mighty name of Jesus to serve the Lord. I release you in the mighty name of Jesus to serve the Lord from this day. I release you for service. I release you for service. I release you for service. I release you for service in the mighty name of Jesus. Hold the hand of the person next to you. Hold that hand of the person next to you and say, God is calling upon you to go and serve him in the wilderness. God wants you to face the challenge. But the challenge that he wants you to face now will bring a blessing if you overcome it. Praise and worship. I want us to begin to sing, to worship the Lord. As I minister to those who really want to be touched. There are some people who don't believe in mass prayer. They want to be touched. We will touch them. Praise and worship.
Shaka, 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 shaka